Welcome to ITU Tech Monthly, a snapshot go-to podcast focusing on the latest insights and innovations in the world of technology, brought to you by ITU, the United Nations Agency for Digital Technologies. Now, in this episode, we're taking a quick dive into the fascinating realm of geospatial AI, GeoAI, and its transformative impact on sustainable development. And I'm joined in the studio today here at uh, the ITU studio in Geneva, in Switzerland, uh, by Andrea Manara, who is from the ITU, from the International Telecommunication Union, which is what ITU stands for, for those who, who are uh, uninitiated, and uh, who will share his experience uh, on how GeoAI is fostering global corporations and paving the way for a more equitable and resilient future. Well, welcome to the studio, Andrea. Thank you, Max. Now, we've known each other for quite quite a while now. You've been in here at ITU for, for a number of years now. Um, I know that uh, this is one of the topics that, uh, that you're familiar with. But for those uninitiated listeners... What exactly is GeoAI and how is it helping us to address complex global challenges? GeoAI is the new uh, scientific discipline and the intersection of uh, geospatial data and artificial intelligence. Geospatial data is more than just uh, satellite data. It includes uh, all uh, data types uh, which are uh, tied to the Earth systems. So it can be LiDAR data, IoT sensors, uh, even uh, geotagged uh, social media data. Okay, so this, what, what, what is the use of this data and what are the, some of the key innovations uh, in GeoAI and the tools being used? I would say that one of the key innovations relate to geospatial foundation models, which are large AI models which have been uh, pre-trained uh, on a vast amount of, of data, multimodal data. It can be satellite imagery on, or all of the other data sources that I was uh, mentioning before. So um, what people were used to do, they were building uh, models which were just uh, um, able to do one simple task, like uh, uh, detecting if uh, in an image you have... Uh, crop or non-crop. So you fed the model with uh, imagery that, that you had to label so that we would say, okay, that one uh, is crop, this is non-crop, and so on and so forth. So fields that had wheat or nothing at all. Right. Okay. Right. As an example. Yeah. As an example. And at that point, you, you had uh, a model that was uh, able only to do that. Okay. So and what, what use was that model? I mean, what, what use is it for us to, to know from space if something has got crops on it or something doesn't? So, as an example, uh, FAO is using that, that, that information uh, to work on food security. So, and FAO is the, the Food, the food Agricult and Agriculture Organization, organization right. which is a, an organization that uh, it focuses on, like you say, elements like food security and that kind of thing around the world, making sure that people, people are, are getting fed. Exactly, exactly. And with them, we also organized a couple of uh, GOI competitions uh, okay. a day for good to identify really what we were discussing, like uh, crop uh, mapping. Crop mapping. Okay. All right. So that's one, 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 uh, one example. Uh, what about advancements in uh, next generation networks and communications? How, how do you see GeoAI integrating uh, with technologies like 6G and, and AI enabled, you mentioned IoT, the Internet of Things, uh, to further enhance uh, sustainable development efforts? Right. That uh, is, is really an, uh, an immense uh, potential to uh, advance the sustainable de development goal because you are bringing the intelligence inside the infrastructure or the, the environmental uh, monitoring system. So with the uh, innovations like uh, 6G, with, with, uh, with its uh, very low latencies, we would be able uh, really to achieve uh, much more. And what about the future for GeoAI? How do you see the future for it? So the future of GeoAI, I think it is, it's already here. 
in the sense that uh, uh, often uh, I, I connect to, to LinkedIn or I read the newspaper and there are amazing uh, innovations. So we, we had recently uh, in this uh, Joy I discovery series that we, we have been organizing since uh, 2001, we have been discussing uh, lately these geospatial foundation models. And uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, there was an announcement made by IBM and ESA about uh, a new foundation uh, model, which has uh, uh, much more capabilities than previous one and uh, will uh, will uh, really make uh, things much more easy and uh, is it, i mean the, the european space agency european space agency okay yes other innovation that i really see is the democratization of this uh, GOI. i was going to say so does that mean you know, everybody can uh, use it anybody can access it Already now is much more easy, and then you can uh, integrate these uh, special foundation uh, models uh, and uh, adapt uh, to doing uh, very different tasks uh, with just uh, a little knowledge because uh, all of the complexity was already embedded uh, in the system at the time uh, this big uh, AI was uh, developed. All the data is there. And so the model has acquired a knowledge of the earth. And so you can easily adapt to make uh, very different tasks. But uh, in the future, I would say that we will have systems like ChatGPT equivalent, right. in which uh, you will just formulate uh, a question in uh, natural uh, language and then uh, uh, automatically you will have uh, as an example the flood uh, maps uh, of a given re region following an event and so it will mean right that much more people uh, will have uh, access to this information. Um, and so where there was a lake before and now a whole village is covered in water, basically, you would be able to tell uh, right. that kind of information. Right. Now, you mentioned about the, the good things about um, GeoAI. Are there any negatives? Are there any things that uh, people need to watch out for in the use of it? Yes, of course, like uh, all uh, AI system, uh, you, you need to be very careful about the bias. So as an example, you need to put in the system uh, information about uh, all the regions in the world right because if not you you will have a, a system which will only be able to work efficiently in given regions but will will not understand how how to deal with different regions mm -hmm. and of course it must be made a lot of attention on issues uh, regarding the data privacy right as sure. an example well, I mean, in, in terms of data privacy, so, I mean, you know, for example, we've got, you know, things like, you know, we look at Google uh, Google Maps and that kind of thing and the satellite images that come in from that, etc. Uh, obviously, that's, you know, a very, very specific thing is looking at people's houses and that kind of stuff. Right. But, um, but here we're talking about uh, aggregating data. We're talking about uh, um, in, uh, looking at uh, specific elements of the landscape, etc., on that side of it. I just wanted to find out in terms of the comp. You mentioned the competition. What kind of entries? What what uh, what were the, the the kind of entries that that were received on that? Do you remember? Right. No. So uh, each year we we organize uh, a number of competitions uh, because we have different uh, geospatial partners uh, which have uh, some geospatial problems to, to be solved. I can, uh, as, as an example, uh, uh, bring the case of the United Nations Organization for uh, Drug and Crime, right. UNODC. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, working with them uh, in the scope of the United Nations uh, uh, Special Information Management uh, Network, so the UN uh, Geospatial Network, uh, which is uh, a thematic network of the ECOSOC uh, United Nations GGIM, uh, Global Geospatial Information Management uh, 
committee. Right. So they have an issue of detecting uh, clandestine uh, runaway in, in the Amazons. I was going to say, absolutely. Yeah. So not just wheat, but I mean, it could be poppies, it could be... Uh, crops that are being grown uh, for purposes that uh, might not be quite so legitimate. Right. Absolutely. In fact, uh, as an example, these uh, uh, clandestine uh, runaway are often associated to illicit activities like uh, illegal mining, uh, logging, uh, or uh, narcotics mm -hmm. trafficking. So, what, what they do normally is that they, they have uh, just special uh, analysts which uh, uh, look uh, at the images and identify, okay, this is uh, a runaway, so on and so forth. And then, of course, uh, they are interested in uh, automating the process. So they propose the competition. I need also to thank them because they contributed also to price money. Mm -hmm. And they... Uh, mentioned to, to me at the end of the competition that uh, the top three solutions, which were indeed awarded, they offer some uh, interesting uh, solutions uh, which uh, will help them uh, in uh, continuing their research activities in the topic. Great. And another very interesting uh, competition, which, which was submitted uh, last year was uh, uh, proposed by the Politecnico di Milano. Right. It was on, uh, on uh, estimating pollution level, NO2 pollution level at uh, ground level. Right. And this only by using uh, satellite imagery. Okay. And so how, how did it do that then? They do that because uh, there are satellites like uh, uh, the... Sentinel-5 uh, from the Copernicus, uh, which uh, are able to tell which is the pollution level, but in the atmosphere. Right. So, of course, you need to find a way to make a correlation I between see. the yeah. level in the atmosphere and mm -hmm. the level at the uh, ground right. level yeah. where health is actually affected. So, they did uh, a competition on the region around uh, Milano right. in Italy, okay. which is one of the most polluted in the world. Right. Not, not Delhi or New Delhi? Not Delhi. Delhi. <laughs> Milano is very polluted. Okay. Right. And, uh, and of course, they have uh, uh, all, all these uh, sensors, which are yes. very expensive, mm -hmm. of course, to maintain, to, to build a, and maintain. Uh, the, for the modeling, they, they, they use... Uh, different sensors, mm -hmm. but then what they see is that a very uh, reasonable uh, estimation of the pollution, uh, it can be built up uh, by only using uh, satellite imagery. Right. So that actually means uh, that uh, you could uh, build up a solution which can be applied also in developing uh, Nations sure. where, of course, uh, produce uh, and install and maintain uh, this uh, monitoring uh, network would be not, uh, not possible. So it, it, it would really be actually a game changer. And we've come a uh, long way around back to the, the, the future of GOAI. But I just wanted to find out, just as a sort of final word, really, what, what excites you most about GOAI? What, what are you looking forward to, perhaps, the most uh, in the future? Or, you know, uh, what's, what's currently happening now that will hopefully um, make a big difference in the world? I would say that special data is helpful, I, I would say, for for advancing uh, all of the SDGs. The Sustainable Development Goals, right? Okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. By 2030, we'll all be there, yes? Yes. Okay. So, of course, with the advancement in uh, GOI, mm -hmm. uh, I think that, that we will be able to build up all the tools that, that we really need to try to solve uh, all of these very pressing challenges that we are actually facing. Well, that's a big, big ask, but let's, uh, let's hope uh, that uh, GOAI can certainly uh, help push us in that direction. Well, that 
pretty much wraps up our episode of, of Tech Monthly, which has been brought to you by ITU, the United Nations Agency for Digital Technologies. We hope you enjoyed diving into the world of uh, geospatial AI uh, with my guest, uh, Andrea, and uh, its potential to drive sustainable development. A uh, big thank you to you, Andrea Monaro, for sharing uh, your insights and expertise with us today. Thank you, Max. And uh, do remember to subscribe to ITU Tech Monthly wherever you get your podcasts. And for more exciting discussions on the latest technological advancements and their impact on our world. And do check out our website at www.itu.int. So until next time, stay curious, keep innovating. Tech Monthly is recorded at ITU headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland, presented by me, Max Jacobson-Gonzalez, and produced and edited by Jennifer McLeod. ITU Tech Monthly is an ITU digital production.